Howdy, today I'm going to talk about the greenhouse effect. The science understandings that you're going to look at are that some gases in the atmosphere, called greenhouse gases, warm the atmosphere. You need to describe the action of carbon dioxide and methane and how they maintain that steady temperature in the Earth's atmosphere. Then you need to talk about how anthropogenic increases in greenhouse gases disrupt the thermal balance of the atmosphere and um, the effects of, on climate change of changing the uh, uh, components of the atmosphere. So the temperature of the Earth's surface is around about 15 degrees on average because we have an atmosphere. If we didn't have an atmosphere, um, essentially all the energy that is radiated at the Earth and that gets absorbed by the Earth's surface would get radiated back out to space pretty much straight away. So the atmosphere holds some of that heat into the uh, lower levels of the atmosphere and that keeps us nice and warm and toasty. So here's some pictures showing how the greenhouse effect works. So we get uh, radiation from the sun, it gets absorbed by the surface of the Earth and then at night that gets uh, emitted back out into space. Some of that um, energy gets trapped in the atmosphere, it doesn't make its way back out into space, and that bounces around in the atmosphere, being radiated between the atmosphere and the Earth's surface. So here's another picture showing the same thing. So here we have the sun, we have the solar radiation coming down, it gets absorbed by the surface, it gets radiated back out into the atmosphere, some of it makes its way into space, some gets re-radiated back down, and that's pretty much the story. So we call that the greenhouse effect. So in a greenhouse you have a glass that's trapping heat energy and makes it harder for the heat energy to escape. The gases that uh, do this in the atmosphere are called greenhouse gases. The major greenhouse gas is water vapour. Um, without water vapour, the Earth it would be 33 degrees Celsius cooler. Then there's other greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane. They contribute about one degree of warmth. And then there's others as well. So chlorofluorocarbons, ozone, and nitrous oxide. So there's a few greenhouse gases. We mainly talk about green carbon dioxide and methane, though. We kind of ignore the water vapour. So like I said, there's other greenhouse gases other than water vapour and carbon dioxide and methane. There's also nitrous oxide, ozone and the CFCs. Um, the CFCs, it's very easy to get those confused as part of this. Um, CFCs aren't good for the environment because they break down ozone, but that's a separate atmospheric problem. What happens is if you increase the concentration of greenhouse gases, you increase the amount of radiation that's being trapped in the atmosphere and that increases the temperature. And the way I explain it is it's like a blanket. So at night, um, if you don't have a blanket, all your heat energy just gets radiated off and you get cold. If you put a blanket on, you trap some of that heat energy at the surface, so next to your skin, and that keeps you nice and warm. So we have a look at this graph. We can see uh, you know, average temperatures. And then we can see that the last not long, we have this big spike. And that's uh, the enhanced greenhouse effect. So how do those gases trap heat energy? Um, what happens is infrared radiation bounces into the bonds in the molecules and they cause the uh, bonds to stretch, bend or change the bond angles and that traps the heat energy and that energy is released later. So if we look at, um, here's some carbon dioxide for example, uh, we can stretch the bonds, so we hit it with some infrared radiation, the, bends, uh, the bonds stretch and then they relax. Um, you can also change the bond angles down here. Like I said, when that happens, you're storing energy inside the bonds of the molecule, and that gets re-radiated later, and that's how the energy is trapped. So here's a little animation program that's showing carbon dioxide vibrating. So as I rotate it around, you can see that when it's hit with the infrared radiation, the bonds are changing angle and they're changing length. So we're getting uh, the bonds moving around, therefore the atoms moving around, and that's when the energy is stored. Later on, when those bonds stop moving, the infrared radiation that has been stored gets re-radiated back down to Earth, and that keeps the Earth warm. So evidence has been building since about the 1950s that the concentration of all the greenhouse gases that we've talked about, except for water vapour, have been increasing. Water vapour, there's a certain level of water vapour you can get in the atmosphere before it falls out as rain. So um, it increases to a certain point and then it just falls out as rain. So we don't really uh, worry about water vapour too much. Um, here's a graph showing uh, concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This is measured in parts per million. Um, and this was measured at Mauna Loa, which is a volcano in Hawaii. There's a scientific outpost on the um, volcano that's been measuring daily carbon dioxide levels. And you can see since the 1950s, the levels of carbon dioxide have increased and you get similar graphs of methane as well. So what happens is you get more of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which means you get more infrared radiation trapped in the atmosphere, which means you get less being emitted out into space. 
and that leads to an increase in temperatures in the troposphere. And that has big effects on climate. So where does that carbon come from? The carbon comes from human activities. So the combustion of fossil fuels produces carbon dioxide. Um, the raising of cattle and other animals, that leads to an increase in the amount of methane being produced. Methane is produced from anaerobic decomposition of carbon containing compounds. Um, cutting down and burning rainforests means you get rid of a way of getting rid of carbon dioxide by cutting down trees and then you burn the trees and you release the carbon that's trapped in the trees and that leads to an increase in concentration too. So um, there's lots of ways that this impacts the environment, so we're seeing sea level rise increases. Not all of that is because of uh, melting ice caps, a lot of that is because of just thermal expansion of water. So as you heat up water it gets a little bit bigger, you have a lot of water on earth, you heat it up a little bit, it takes up more space and that means your sea levels go up very quickly. Um, we're seeing effects on many different uh, ecosystems around the world, uh, movement of deserts, all kinds of things, uh, down to this climate change that's because, uh, that occurs because of the enhanced greenhouse effect. So now we need to talk about some of the effects of uh, a warmer climate. Over here we have an animated GIF that's showing the global average temperature for each month from 1850 to 2016. And what you can see the pattern is uh, fairly consistent for a while, the ring gets bigger, the ring gets smaller. But then as we get close to today, the ring starts getting bigger and bigger, um, heading further and further out until we have a close to an increase of about one and a half degrees. Um, the limit placed by the IPCC for essentially the sustainability of humanity is two degrees. Um, so that's a big change over that time period. So some of the effects, um, global sea ice coverage is one of the things that's being affected. So using satellites you can measure how much sea ice there is both in the Arctic and in the Antarctic and you add those together and you get an amount of sea ice. There's a trend and that's kind of between uh, the top and the bottom, we get an average trend that sits along there. Now what we're seeing um, as we get closer today is there's less and less sea ice. 2016-2017 season is about to get, well it's getting below the level of this graph for example. So the amount of ice in the Arctic and Antarctic is decreasing. And the effect of that is that you get less ice reflecting heat energy back into space. The ice is white so it reflects light. Um, if you have less of it you have the ocean absorbing that heat. You get more heating being absorbed by the ocean and that increases the amount of warming that's occurring, uh, the amount of energy that's being trapped. So that has big consequences for the organisms that live on the sea ice, but also for fish that live in the ocean, for example, and everything else that lives in the ocean and all ocean ecosystems. Another effect is that glaciers are attracting. A lot of uh, water is locked up in glaciers, fresh water is locked up in glaciers. And you can track what's happening to a glacier by taking photos, for example, or mapping where it goes to. So here's a glacier. We have where it was in 1850 and where we have it, it, where it is in 2014, 2013, 14. And we can see over that 150 or so year period, the glacier has retreated far and far back away from the coast. And that's due to melting. The glacier was here. That water that was there is melting away. Now, glaciers grow and glaciers shrink. So you have to look at average effects. But uh, glaciers around most of the world are shrinking and at quite a bad rate. Some other effects of uh, changing in climate, um, sea level rise. Uh, this is Greenland up here. Uh, Greenland has a big ice sheet on it that has a lot of fresh water. Um, you can see Greenland is being affected. Anything close to the poles, the temperatures are changing greater at the poles than they are anywhere else. So this ice sheet in uh, Greenland is melting, so that leads to more fresh water going into um, the ocean, and just by adding that water you get an increase in the uh, global sea levels. You have more water, so the water has to go somewhere, so it goes up. Um, there's equivalents in Antarctica as well. There are ice sheets in um, Antarctica that are melting too. That's one aspect, but the other aspect is just if you heat a liquid, it gets bigger. Um, that's how a thermometer works. So here we have some mapping of the global um, mean sea level, so average sea level over the years. This is done here using tidal gauges. Here we're using satellites that can bounce radars off of the sea. Uh, radar waves off the sea and measure how high the sea is. And the trend is over time is that the sea level is rising and this has impacts for uh, people. Most large cities live, are on the coast and they used to be trading ports. So if uh, we think of some of the big cities in the U.S. and well, let's start with the U.S. for example, New York is a big trading post, it's right on the ocean. Uh, Miami, Florida, that was big for trade. Um, Florida in particular, it's really close to sea level, so the effects of uh, sea level change there are going to be quite significant over time. But then we have small countries in the Pacific that many of them aren't that high above um, uh, sea level, and in the ocean, uh, Indian Ocean as well. 
um, as the sea level increases, the inundation rate increases and uh, people don't have places to live anymore. Another effect is um, rainfall. So to get rain, you need to have water evaporating going into the sky. The water condenses around small particles and then falls back down as rain. If you increase the temperature, you increase the amount of that evaporation and you also... Um, but the problem is the atmosphere can only hold a certain amount of water before that water falls back out as rain. So by increasing the temperature, you increase the amount of evaporation, but you also increase the amount of precipitation, so the rain that's coming back down. Here's a map showing predicted changes in uh, where rainfall is going to occur from you know, the average from 80, 1986 to 2005 and future 2081 to 2100. And where the rain is falling is changing. We get this huge increase around the equator. We have a huge increase in the Arctic and the Antarctic, where it normally doesn't rain. Um, they're fairly dry usually. You might get snow but you don't normally get rain in those areas. Um, you can see changes around Africa as well. So some parts of Africa and South America are drying up. Um, so there's big changes in precipitation patterns, and that has big implications for how we grow food. Um, we rely on rain to grow food. So there's big changes um, that are predicted to happen. So here we have a question. It says, explain how an increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases may lead to an increase in the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere. So, if you increase the concentration of greenhouse gases, you increase the amount of uh, heat energy that's being trapped in the atmosphere, or conversely, you reduce the amount of heat energy that gets emitted out into space. That means you have more heat energy in the lower atmosphere, and that leads to an increase in temperatures at the Earth's surface. So, there's many ways of saying the same thing with this question, but the basic idea is, more greenhouse gas means more infrared radiation being trapped and less making its way out to space, and that leads to an increase in average temperature. So, today on Flipping Science, we looked at the greenhouse effect. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.